All right, guys, Counterpunch Boxing. We are back with another one. How you doing out there in YouTube land? Let me get everything working. All right, today. All right, well. I want to kick it off with, a, I have a, a few channel announcements I'd kind of like to go over real quick. Number one, uh, when I make videos on my phone like I am now, uh, you really want to watch them in, uh, in full view. You know, click the little box, make the picture bigger. Uh, number two... So, I, and I, I even reached out to the YouTube community. I wanted to know, uh, you know, should we, you know, what should we favor, quality or quantity, meaning... Do we put out a long video every day, kind of uh, going over everything, or do we break it down into individual videos and, you know, maybe do between, uh, you know, like two and four per day? Um, I've decided to, to do, you know, maybe between two and four per day with, you know, uh, relevant information, not a bunch of garbage. You know, uh, I don't want to waste your time, and I certainly don't want to waste my own time, but... uh you know, I got to say, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the channel and, you know, the support is is tremendous. I mean, I uh, I'm uh, blown away by, uh, you know, everything that the viewers and, uh, you know, the people watching the channel have done. You know, they're sharing it. They're talking about it. The channel is growing at a tremendous rate. So I wanted to, you know, to say thank you. Uh, I do appreciate it. And it really does motivate me to continue on. All right. Crawford. Terrence Crawford versus John Molina Jr. Now remember, Canelo Alvarez had the December 10th date uh, set, and then he was injured in the Liam Smith fight. That date opened up on HBO, and uh, Crawford and Molina fight was made. And, you know, a really cool thing about the fight is we have top rank Bob Arum and top rank working with Al Heyman. Um... I mean, the politics in boxing have, have nearly ruined boxing, honestly. You have, you know, promoters that are, that are more interested in making a dollar than the actual tradition of boxing. You know, carrying on that, that, that long tradition uh, of boxing, you know, the best fighting the best. Uh, you know, instead of, you know, guys like Al Heyman wanting to monopolize boxing, you know, he wants to have all of his own fighters uh, you know, fighting against each other, and as a as a boxing fan, you're denied a good fight. You know, so now you know now we have Top Rank and uh, Al Heyman working together. Um, I, you know, the potential is just huge. Uh, you know, even like maybe like a Broner, Adrian Broner, in a Terrence Crawford fight. I mean, I mean, I can I could list a hundred of them, but you know, I'm excited about that. So you know. Uh, I, I'm really happy that, uh, for whatever reason, even if it's, you know, financial reasons, I, you know, we know Al Heyman, uh, and the premier boxing champion thing isn't doing too good. So whatever the reason I'm happy. Um, all right, look, let's get into the fight. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make it quick today. I'm trying to keep every video around 10 minutes long. Terrence Crawford, uh, what is Mr. Crawford? 29 and 0, uh, coming off a, a unanimous decision against, uh, Victor Postal. Great fight. Uh, and then we have John Molina Jr., 29, 6 and 0. Okay. Now Crawford, he's won four out of his last six fights by stoppage. And, uh, you know, I'll get, <laughs> I don't want to tell you right now, I'll get to my prediction in a minute, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Crawford is on, I mean, he's on a terror right now. I mean, he's just, he's just running through that division, but, uh, 30 day way in, uh, coming in Crawford coming in at 150.6 and then, uh, John Molina Jr. Coming in at 154 pounds. Now, you know, they have another, you know, roughly, uh, where are we at here? Uh, you know, like 20 something days to drop, you know, to drop to 10 pounds. And these guys know what they're doing. Uh, you know, I know they'll make weight. Um, you know, and, and, you know, in my opinion too, J John Molina Jr., he's a little big for the division. Uh, he's a little, he's five, 10 and a half, Terrence Crawford, five, eight. And, you know, so, I mean, you know, but really that five, 10 and a half, I think John Molina Jr. is a little bit bigger than that. Uh, so, you know, he, he's as big for the light welterweight division, in my opinion. But, you know, I think Terrence Crawford will, uh, he, he's not going to have a problem with that. Uh, you know, the Crawford, he's had two fights this year. Uh, you know, Merry Christmas from uh, <laughs> Bob Arum. Uh, 
you know, and I was actually shocked that the fight was made. Um, it kind of came out of nowhere, really. Uh, you know, and we and, and we we kind of refer to John Molina as a gatekeeper. Um, man, I mean, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to discredit him or anything like that. But I mean, he really has become kind of a gatekeeper. Um, but I think Crawford, he's looking to make a statement in this fight. Uh, but but you know, like I said, Molina is a big. Uh, you know, a, a, a big, light welterweight uh, with a tough chin. Now, Crawford, he starts out a little bit slow. We know that. Uh, and he kind of warms up in the later rounds. And then John Molina, it's like he gets, you know, more, he gets powerful. He, he you know, his stamina, I think, goes up in the later rounds. I mean, he's, he's a better fighter in the later rounds. Uh, so it's interesting, very interesting matchup, you know, uh, you know, but, uh, and, and look, I want to break down the record real quick, because, uh, I mean, like I said, when you're looking at John Molina, it's hard to, to really size him up. I mean, he's a very unpredictable fighter, and you just, you know, you look at him, and, and, and even when they announced it, I was like, huh, Molina, hmm. You know, but then I really thought about it, and you look, okay, I mean, 2016, he, he won a UD, unanimous decision over Ruslan Provodnikov, okay, Um Great fight. Now, I know a lot of people out there claim that, you know, uh, Ruslan was robbed or, you know, maybe not robbed, but it was, it was a really close fight. And I'd like to see Provo get back in the ring because, uh, you know, I, I don't think he should retire. I really don't. Uh, 2015, uh, Romero, TKO. Uh, then AB, Adrian Broner, again in 2015, he lost. Now, he, he did have three losses in a row, okay? Um, with the Lucas Matisse fight, uh, Humber hum Humberto Soto fight, and then Adrian Broner. And actually, I talked to Soto uh, about that fight. Uh, he was in Houston for the Canelo Kirkland fight, and I had a chance to talk to Soto about that fight. Cool guy, great guy. He was really nice uh, taking uh, pictures with the fans and everything. And uh, I, have, I have a lot of footage uh, I might put up on the channel. Uh, like, I did a little interview with him, and uh, he did like an open workout, you know, hitting the mitts and all that. But I might put that video uh, up in the channel, on the channel. But uh, back to John Molina. Okay, the Adrian Broner fight in 2015. Man, I really felt like, I felt like John, um, it's like he took a dive. Uh, I mean, he was not himself that night. And it was almost like, you know, it, he was almost like acting, like pretending to box at, at times. I mean, at times, like he really turned it on. But, you know, I kind of wondered, I was like, man, did they pay Molina to like, you know, to, to let Adrian Broner win? Um, I don't know. I didn't like that fight, though. And if you go back and watch it, it is not, you know, the same John Molina that fought uh, Humber Humber Humberto Soto or Lucas Matisse. I mean, totally different Molina showed up that night. But then coming off that loss, you know, he came back to win uh, Romario uh, TKO. And then, uh, of course, a Ruslan Provodnikov uh, unanimous decision. And that kind of earned him. He is the number one contender for Terrence Crawford. Um, you know, so really, I mean, it's kind of hard to complain about the fight. Uh, both belts up, the WBA and the WBC. Now, remember Terrence Crawford uh, becoming the unified champion after de defeating uh, Victor Postal. He became the WBA, WBC unified champion. Also, uh, the win... Uh, you know, kind of gave him the, or gave him the, the ring title, meaning uh, he's the lineal champion because he had the WBA, the WBC and the ring title, making him the lineal champ, uh, uh, unified champ. You know, so uh, it, it's a great fight. Both belts are on the line. And, you know, I, and look, I'm not uh, counting Molina out in the fight. I mean, I have Terrence Crawford winning Man, it, when I want to say by 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 decision, but uh, you know, Alex, I think he's trying to make a statement. You know, I think that you know he he has a lot of momentum now after after the uh, post stall fight, and I think he's really looking to make a statement. Uh, so I, I I'm thinking eight eighth or ninth round uh, TKO. I mean, like I said, he's TKO'd four out of the last six guys that he's had he's fought so you know i think he's going to continue that tradition uh you know and i think that uh you know stylistically 
you know, Molina, kind of slow, kind of flat-footed. Uh, Crawford, you know, good movement, good footwork, uh, you know, powerful. They both both guys have, have pretty good power. Um, each each guy is right around like 70% knockout ratio. So, you know, both guys have good power. Uh, the fight will be in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, that's the only thing. I wish Terrence Crawford would kind of venture out of the whole Omaha, Nebraska thing. <laughs> you know, uh, I would just like to see him in a, in a different venue under a different light. You know, I think he's really comfortable there at home in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, people are asking too, well, what is next for, for Crawford? Well, you know, I think he should continue, uh, you know, try to try to get another belt. You know, I think he's definitely, you know, at least get one more belt and then maybe uh, move up to welterweight. Now, as far as making a statement, I think he's trying to make that statement so he can get, you know, a potential Manny Pacquiao fight uh, at 140 and maybe even a catchweight. You know, so uh, I've heard a lot of rumor and a lot of talk about that, that, you know, he's really wanting to to look good in the fight you know, to kind of lure in Manny Pacquiao. And we and we know, we all remember, uh, you know, before Pacquiao took the Jesse Vargas fight, they were talking about a Terrence Crawford-Manny Pacquiao matchup. And then, you know, of course, everyone said, well, you know, Manny, uh, you know, he's going for a money grab uh, with the Vargas fight. So, you know, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, that's about all I have, guys. And real quick, a quick note, uh, the tickets are $27. I mean, wow, that is really cheap. Um, if you can actually get to the fight in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, they, they start at $27 and go up to like around $130. Um, and that's not bad. I mean, any fight that I've ever gone to, I mean, tickets usually start around one or around around 40, like 40 to 50, you know, so to have a $27 ticket, that's, uh, you know, I mean, God, that's like going to a movie, you know, anyone, anyone can afford that. Uh, but yeah, um, but like I said, uh, I'm going to end it there. I don't want to make the video too long. I really wanted to break it down and I probably will. Uh, the, the video today is kind of a, just a, you know, just a quick look at the fight. And um, but we're going to break it down in another video. Uh, I, I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter, guys. So. All right. Counterpunch Boxing. Thank you for watching.